Before the episode, we want to thank some of our Patreon supporters. Thank you, Deanna, Rose, Kaylee, Lindsay, and Betty. We appreciate you so much. Uh, Patreon is actually how we pay for the software and the editing and all the things that go into the podcast. And it also helps us keep the magazine and the website going. So if you love the things that are happening at the Sartorial Geek and you want to support us, you can head to patreon.com slash Sartorial Geek. We have some really cool rewards that are like exclusive merch and getting a shout out on the podcast and getting some stuff sent to you in the mail every month. So if you love what we're doing and want to help us out, we would appreciate it so, so much. And thank you to everyone who is already over there. Hey, welcome to the Sartorial Geek Podcast. I'm Jordan Ellis of Jordan Today, and I'm so freaking excited to be talking to Liana Kangas today. Hello. Hey, I'm so excited to be on. I know. I... Did we talk about this recently, how we actually met? I feel like you're just a person I've known, like a geek girl superstar that I've just known since the beginning yes, of yes. nerd life. You've been there since the beginning, I think, because I moved locally and someone recommended me your shop. Oh my gosh. And I was like, so nice. hey, I think I live near Brooklyn-ish, like when I was in Jersey. And then we never hung out. I know, in person, well, which was stupid. I mean, that's you know, like, we're right. not that close, but yeah, yeah. You can't like just pop into Jersey whenever yeah, you that's want. That's true. <laughs> but I'm now it's difficult see... enough getting to Manhattan. Like. It is. It for <laughs> sure is. But now we see each other at conventions because you are all over, which is so fun. Yeah. Tell yeah. The people. Tell the people what you do and what your what art things you're working on and stuff. so. I'm Liana Kangas, and I am a comic artist currently. Uh, my series right now that I'm working on is with Vault Comics. It is called She Set Destroy. And I've been in the comics game for, I think, about two or three years now, right? I think that's, that's when we so first started short chatting. also, though. Like, I have been told that it is very short, and I'm a little proud of myself. Yeah. But I don't want to get too proud. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, so... and. It, the other series I've worked on, I've worked on a ton of anthologies and um, a ton of short pieces, but the other series I did was with Vida Ayala, who's also, I think, a Brooklyn native. Yeah. Um, and that's published through Black Mask. Oh, sweet. What's that yeah. one called? Uh, that one's called Black AF Devils Die. So it's yes, part yes, of the yes, Black okay. series um, uh, created by Kwanzaa and Tim Smith. Uh, yeah. and my editor, Sarah Litt was on that. And I think Sarah is actually, I met her through a mine signing, which was that, um, Ringo winning anthology. The one that was in support of, of like Planned Parenthood and everything. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, that's all cool. that's it's a all ton like, of great people to work with. Yeah. And I feel like I met them all living like in Jersey. So that might be why, like it just skyrocketed in three years. <laughs> That's great though too. Cause I mean, so I, I truly am not up on like comics news. I know what my friends are doing and I know the, like, I feel like certain stories, like everyone I follow is reading or talking about, but yeah. it's so cool. Like she said, destroy has been on huge, huge banners at cons before, which is yeah. like a really big deal. <laughs> That's so awesome. It's been a little, like, not overwhelming, but, like, for me to look back on it, like, so we debuted at Emerald City, which is, I think, when one of the first times we hung out and yeah. saw each other. I so love it, that show, too. Yeah, that's show. my favorite show by far. That was mm -hmm. my first one, but, oh, my gosh, so amazing. Mm -hmm. um, it debuted there. We had our sci-fi live interview with, uh, I think, Karima uh, on stage there and then I think at C2E2 immediately after uh is when uh I did the sci-fi artist alley recording that was with Erin right yes Erin awesome. is so great yeah and I think also cool. I met her through you right you yeah, and Jasmine probably yeah she's done Amazing. art uh <laughs> for the magazine before and she's just like a cool New York geek girl um, yes 
Oh man, I love everything. <laughs> this makes you me so happy. The cutest, best crew. Like everyone's <laughs> so like well dressed and like super cool and really nice. I will tell you the struggle that goes in behind the scenes to that. (laughs) Like we text each other outfits. I mean, Robin and I all the time are like, how do we look fine? (laughs) Like we just normally wear workout clothes and like t-shirts all the time. And we're trying to love you and Robin look a hundred percent all the time. All the time. (laughs) That is the nicest thing you could possibly say. Uh, It's a struggle. I'll tell you behind the scenes. (laughs) We are trying so hard. (laughs) I think uh, the first time I met Robin was when I actually had a panel with her. And I was like, oh, we're in a panel together. This is awesome. And that was one of the times, I think it was uh, run by Nerd for a Living. I was going to say, Nerd for a Living has also been a huge catalyst to, like, actually bringing all of the people that, like either panels that I've been on with them or been to because I go to all of theirs. I'm like, oh, these are all the cool nerds I wanted to meet. <laughs> anyway, exactly. on one stage, it's so Wendy great. and Adrian, I feel like, are the best curators for just people in general, but yeah. also, like, our specific, that whole specific niche, like, the geek girl, like, a true hardcore geek girl, like, but also make it fashion. They do. Yeah. yeah. They do such a great job. If anyone listening ever goes to a convention, like look for that, any nerd for a living panel on the list and you will not be disappointed. I cry in almost all of them. <laughs> like everyone what? tells the best because like it's everyone's like inspirational stories. And I'm like, this is so beautiful. I love everyone. I had three so people great. come up to me at my booth right after that panel and like, thanked me for telling my story and like how they they find it even more approachable now that I've talked about I was like wow honestly if I ever wanted any goal in my career it would be to like inspire people like that yeah so it was really nice to kind of you know connect with other people outside of just the panel because the panel is great as it is because you get to connect with like you know the moderator and also everyone else on the panel like Robin um (laughs) and you know Wendy and so It's nice that, you know, it actually, like, had a ripple effect towards the people actually attending Emerald City. Yeah, Yeah, I totally agree. And I've been the person who says that to people on the panel, too. (laughs) Like, it's so great. We have a question that I don't know the answer to. What did you do before comics? Because that, I just realized that's, like, a very new career Yeah. uh, So I moved around a lot. And before I think I pursued freelance art in general, I was actually an outreach coordinator of a university. And like the specification was uh, working on continuing education. So a lot of the stuff I did was actually um, marketing, uh, outreach, and doing a lot of their art files, hilariously. Um, And it was towards, like, this group of educators mostly, so people that wanted to learn about applied behavior analysis, which um, if anyone knows anyone with autism or, like, Asperger's and stuff like that, you probably have heard uh, applied behavior analysis. Yeah. Um, So it was really gratifying to work in that, like, adjacent to that field, you know, and, like connect with all of these like teachers or like parents that had kids with autism, um, things like that. And what we had in the program was uh, this certification that you kind of like couple with a degree and you can end up working in the field, like, you know, in like school systems and stuff like that. So that's so cool. So then like you just started being like more into the art factor and like trying it out freelance or how did you decide to go into comics I think like well I've always read comics um and I always shout out actually at Emerald City my old comic shop owner the place I grew up 25 years um I've known him for a really long time his name is Rick Shea he surprised me at Emerald City so I'm originally from Florida so he flew all the way to Emerald City for work and stuff like that and surprised me which is really cool um and he's always been really supportive of, you know, like I would go to the shop and like, kind of like work for work for uh, store credit. And uh, I would doodle and stuff like hanging out when everyone was there. But I've always been interested in comics. And I would draw occasionally. Um, 
during day job. Like I've always had like one or two jobs. I don't know if it's like that hustle life or like just something. I think, like, it is. Bored, I think it's like, also the like work around the same age. Like the economy has not been great ever yeah. since we've had to make money. So I think that's just what most of us who live in not cheap places do. Exactly. And, um, you know, like I never thought art was like a viable like side job or whatever. But uh, when I met my now uh, husband, he knew that I've always wanted to do like art for a living. Like I would do commissions for like friends and stuff like that, but nothing very serious. Um, And around the time him and I met, I think I had tried to do like uh, fine art painting. And when he told me he was moving to Toronto, uh, he asked me to go, which is awesome. And the stipulation was that I could pursue freelancing, um, and see if I wanted to do it and figure it out. And that's, that's so what cool. I did. Yeah. That's and, so awesome. Yeah. And, you know, I think people like Jen Bartel um, and a couple other people on Twitter bring this up a lot, but uh, there's always somebody that's in your life that's going to be supportive like that. And I, you know, thank God for my husband. He's, he's phenomenal. Um, if, he didn't give me that small chance, you know, uh, it would have never happened in my opinion, you know, but that's a really scary thing to do. And if the people in your life aren't supportive, then it's kind I mean, I don't say it's impossible, but it is much, much harder. Yeah. It's like constant hurdles. I think like I've never had a family that was like, you should not pursue art because my grandpa was an artist. Um, but they were always like, you got to be realistic about it. Like, yeah, just be smart about it. I made the decision not to go to art school because I knew that uh, the likelihood of that degree getting me a job was pretty close to none. And the way I went to school actually was getting a job at the university. So like I had three jobs and I applied for the university and I was like, okay, if I can get out of part-time and do full-time, then the school is actually free. Like you get, I think two classes a semester or something like that. And so that's what I did. And that's actually, I paid for my own education and, you know, thought that, you know, as long as I get that backup thing, I could do art part-time or, you know, do it whenever I wanted. And I wasn't like married to the fact, like I always wanted to be a graphic designer and my boss always knew that at the university. So when she, um, when I got uh, promoted within, um, she actually requested to make that outreach position include a lot of art related concepts. So like I did the graphic design for, um, all of our print marketing materials and stuff like that. So like to have people on your side, even just that, you know, to have, uh, the ability to flex a little bit of art muscle and like it always being there was definitely supportive of making the decision, the leap of faith. Right. Like, and I did a lot of things to line up in order to do it. Cause I wasn't just like, all right. And jumped right in, you know, yeah, like I right. a ton of money, like, and I made goals for myself, like realistic goals. Like if I didn't make this much, you know, in half the year, then I would quit and get a part-time job. And I actually did. And that's how that's I worked great. at a comic shop for uh, a while in Toronto. Um, and met a lot cool. of, yeah, met a lot of the, you know, my favorite people in comics that way. And even a lot of people in animation because uh, we were near an animation college. So it's kind of learning while working dot com. Yeah, I know. Know. that's so cool. I mean, and it worked, which is incredible. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, like that one of my favorite things to do is talk about, you know, the the process of like trying to break into the industry and you know, everyone's always like, there's no clear cut way. And truly there is not, but there's always, you know, I feel like a lot of people could give some pretty good advice, like breaking into the industry. Cause there are things like, you know, like making friends and things like that. Um, and true, like genuine relationships because people will think about you and like, they will recommend like, you know, like meeting Sarah, Sarah Litt, who was the editor on the Devil's Die series, uh, met her at the mind signing. We connected for a little bit. I, I vaguely remember like Vita's mom being there too. And like, we're all standing in a circle, like just chatting and laughing and, you know, (laughs) and I shooting the shit and, uh, 
you know, Sarah just thought about me, I guess, when the series opportunity came up and she thought about me and thought I'd be a good fit with Vita, obviously, because Vita and I were like already Twitter friends and like we finally met in person and they're phenomenal and we like clicked immediately, I feel like. And so, you know, just all, it's all chance, I think. So I mean, yes. And I think you have a very good point in that, like, knowing more people is almost never a bad thing. Like just meeting people and not, not for the sake of trying to get something out of it. Cause that's super obvious, but like, yeah, just knowing people. And even, even if there isn't like a direct line or even if it, you know, nothing comes of it for years, that's like directly related to your work. It's just good. Yeah. To be top of mind with people who, you know, and are friends with which is awesome. You know, it's crazy. Like in this industry and this meaning, like, I guess pop culture in general is like, there's so many wonderful people like to get to know and everything. And the, the more you meet people, the more you find like, Oh, that person actually likes the same thing I like. And like you connect even like on a deeper level each time. Like, I feel like either whether it be at a convention or like, from Twitter, like you make a post and they're like, Oh my God, I like that too. Like finding out you liked the Schwab's book. So I was like, yes, because that's the one book out of, um, how I like, I haven't read novels in forever. Yeah, I don't and, do it. Uh, <laughs> my, my best friend, Stacy, uh, she was in the geek girl blogger network, I guess. I, yeah, I'm pretty cool. sure that's how we met. Right. I don't yeah. even remember. Um, I had talked to her because we were in a comic swap and her and I liked all the same comics. And I was like, Hey dude, I know you like novels. I really just want to sit down and like read a good book. What can I read? Here's what I've previously read, which was just like a very short list of Chuck Palahniuk books, which like very Same. difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. So I was like, just give me something that I can read. That's like adulty, but not too adult, but like, it'll keep me interested. And Stacy recommended that book. And I was like, honestly, that's been the only book I've read over the past like couple of years. That's but it's so, so good. Awesome. It's so good. Yeah. And it's that instant, like, you're right. It's that instant connection of like, usually it means you have some other like shared life experience. Like I remember finding out that Sam Maggs was into Neopets from San Diego and I was like, (laughs) what? Okay. I already loved you. And now (laughs) I think I used to have like three accounts and I had like so many, oh my God. Like and I'm not sure I had the email to bring back it. Yeah, I tried to get into it. I can't. I mean, it's lost forever. But yeah, you're right. Like finding that whatever specific thing you're like. I actually, and the the Fox Robin Hood movie, the, the mm-hmm. Disney movie, like that has been this weird thing that, I mean, culturally that movie is kind of not really spoken about a lot, but there's mm-hmm. this whole group of people who are obsessed with it. I'm like, had a crush on him as a kid and we're all <laughs> together, and it's so wonderful <laughs> you're like oh thank god I wasn't the only one <laughs> yeah, there's so many of us and we had no idea so yeah because yeah. all we had back then was like geo cities and like bad uh-huh. fan pics. like what sites could you find back then it was so hard to connect like totally what IRC and like a forum like yeah. it was so hard it was I know so, hard. so now that we have all of these things the best yeah, geek girls now have it easy, like direct contact almost. It's great. Yep. Um, I want to ask you about she said destroy. Like what? Like what's it about? And what? I mean, I don't want don't you don't have to sell it, but like you know, what's your favorite thing about working on it? And what's the what's the gist of the story? So uh, she said destroy is a five issue miniseries through Vault Comics, and it's about two goddesses who are sisters and one is trying to essentially wage war over the other because she wants the last remaining of the followers um, and the power left in the universe essentially um so it's against bridget this the goddess of the sun and the morgan the goddess of death and we have like these set of people that follow both of the goddesses one are the light knights which protect bridget and you know, our followers of the sun and the, you know, the powers of the light and then uh, the fae, which are, you know, protectors of like 
the goddess of death, the Morrigan, and also um, believers of, uh, you know, this process of death. And um, there's even fairies involved. It's essentially like witches in space. It's sci-fi and it's set in the very distant future. And um, it working on it has been amazing because we've been getting such phenomenal feedback from both fantasy, you know, like being in the comics industry, but also enjoying like geek girl, like pop culture. Yeah. A lot of people are into fantasy and I've never quite found my niche like in fantasy yet. Um, other than maybe V Schwab's uh, dark shade of magic series, but uh, <laughs> like to be working on a book that's half and half fantasy and sci-fi has been the best experience. Um, Joe lets me, Joe is the writer, Joe Carallo. Um, I flex every single thing that I want to draw period. Um, he gives me full range. There are legitimate castle spaceships. It's the best. And so the Morrigan is what's kind of viewed as the main character of the series. And she is this very strong, almost kind of Joan of Arc looking goddess. And, um, the amount of world building that Joe's gone, you know, lengths to, to invest in this has been great. And we, we've kind of compared it in the past, like when we were doing, you know, the diamond solicits and everything to um, like Star Wars meets Wictive. Um, and Which like, okay. That is yes. Like right? <laughs> yeah. And so, and we truly like, we're like, yeah, we want to make this, this is like pretty much what it's like. And, you know, obviously him and I are both fans of Kieran and Jamie and, uh, we just like that they're so great at world building with all these gods and goddesses and everything. And so we're like, Joe had this idea to make the Morgan, not like this pitted darkness of, you know, she's always like painted in this bad light. So he was like, Nope, the Morgan is essentially like the heroine in this story. And so that's how it's going to be. And so it's been a great arc. Um, Obviously, I'm a little biased, but I do think that readers of pretty much any genre would enjoy it, uh, especially sci-fi and fantasy. So, I mean, I don't think I don't think like there are many people listening to this podcast that don't love either Star Wars or <laughs> so, I'm sure there are a few, but uh, those are pretty solid like entry points, which is great. Yes. And I've had a couple, you know, like, uh, um, Nina of, uh, what's her Instagram handle? Nina oh, Fancy. Yes. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like she's been supportive. Like, I think she picked up, uh, the first issue, which was awesome. And, you know, just to see like that overlap of like, Oh my God. Like I remember when I was just like reading your blog or like, you know, following and like for them to cyclical to come back and like support me. It's really cool. So it's also, I guess it's hard to describe in a podcast. We'll have like, we'll have uh, images um, in the show notes and like link to your Instagram and stuff, but your art is so specific and awesome. Like, I don't, I mean, I don't know any other artists who mm -hmm. do art like you. And it's like, Oh my God, I'm so bad at describing art, but like just the way it's like <laughs> sort of watercolory, but isn't, and the colors are great. And it just like, everything feels so like calm and beautiful. I Thank don't you. I, it's, my, it's my favorite. <laughs> I love that means a lot, uh, because we, uh, I think Joe and I took an entire month and a half deciding who we would ask to be the colorist because it was so specific. And my line art is, um, I, don't like using artist terms, but from what I've been told from uh, reviews that it looks intentional. Um, and I kind of actually like that description um, because I use uh, this very uh, distinctive, I guess, disconnect with my lines yeah. and uh, to find a colorist that was going to be okay with that and to also build on top of that was very stressful for Joe and I. And we also wanted uh, to support, you know, we wanted somebody that was uh, either, you know, we looked for people that were queer, that were, you know, women of color, that were in, 
you know, we didn't want to just limit ourselves to like a small pool of people that have been working in the industry. We tried really hard to research um, and try to dig through Twitter and everything to find somebody that like would be a good fit. I and think so, that's so cool too, like remembering it obviously is always easier to go with like the first easy, like someone who's already well known, that's already top of mind. And it, it does take work to kind of search for someone who hasn't necessarily been found yet, or like, isn't like a staple in your niche. But I think that's really great that you were so intentional about that because a lot of people forget, like when you're trying to break in, you're like, why won't anyone give me a chance? And then you get in and you're like, forget (laughs) about. yeah, yeah. So that's great that you guys didn't do that. Yeah, we try. I, I mean, it was uh, hard, but our, you know, our editor Adrian of Vault, uh, he actually found Rebecca. Which, um, you know, when I first saw Rebecca's work, I was like, oh, I recognize this, and I, I think it was like a web comic or something that she drew that I came across a while back, and so I was like, oh my god, I really hope she says yes because I feel like she would one recognize my line work. You can tell in her work that it would be not easy for her, but conceptually, I think that they would both go together. And so she, I essentially was like, Hey, um, here's my previous work, anything close to this, but obviously make it you like anything bright, you know, this is like kind of what we're going for. We want it to be kind of like, you know, anyone that would pull it off the shelf, like, Oh, what is this? You know, like one of those reactions. And then I think Adrian also found our letter, Melanie, Um, so it, I like that it was a great team to work with and we actually just wrapped up the series and they put in so much hard work, so much hard work. And so we're really lucky that we had people as dedicated as, you know, Melanie and Rebecca on our team. Uh, that means a lot too, you know what I mean? Like just cause we're all working in a team and it's so difficult to like, make sure that everyone has like a total life and then is also like hitting deadlines. And I'm not sure if, you know, any of the listeners might know how comics work specifically, but typically colorists and letterers have a couple books a month that they're working on, you know, like for me, it's just one book. Well, ideally it's one book. Sometimes I overcommit, but, um, colorists are working their butts off. I think Rebecca's working on Xena and uh, Glow and all these amazing books. So I, I'm pretty sure Melanie's working on a couple as well. So That's so cool. Yeah, yeah. The, the behind the scenes of comics is something I'm like slowly learning just from meeting people who are doing it. And it's wild. Like yeah. the number of people who have to work together on the same deadlines <laughs> Yes, and, like, yeah. get things done is so impressive. We have we got really lucky, I think, with Vault because they're a publisher that is truly like dedicated to like quality and also supporting smaller creators. And also, you know, it's a small team, but they're all like in it to win it. Like they're all partners. They're all very invested. So yeah. it wasn't like a quick like you know just like on the line turn around. It was like okay, like very intentional, very you know like. Tim Daniel, the designer uh, of like the logo and the books. And honestly, he art directed all of my covers because I like, I was like, Tim, 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 you know, like I need you, I need you for this. You're going to make it better. I know you will. So like help me with this. And it was so cool to collaborate on every side. Like Damien, the publisher, he just, you know, made sure everything was like going and like making it work. And then Adrian, obviously our editor and even like two other people like David and Ian and, all these people that work for vault, just making sure that, you know, everything happened at Emerald city, like, uh, Kim who used to work there, booked us like that sci-fi thing. And like, it's just crazy to me, um, working from a different book and then jumping onto this, like creator around, uh, it having this full scope of like, okay, Joe and I have to be like three different positions at once, almost every day or like, you know, reaching out to vault and being like, okay, what do we do next? And like, not just drawing the book, not just writing the book. So it's a learning experience. (laughs) That's great that you could do it with a really good team though. I can imagine that makes all the difference. 
Yeah, I think uh, a lot of, you know, listeners probably for the podcast would be interested in stories by Vault just because they are very much like catered or like, you know, curated essentially like he then um i'm not sure if you've heard about that one it just got picked up for a movie and the director is um the lady that did twilight okay i I think i have like seen that uh is faith a vault comic faith is a valiant comic okay (laughs) i'm pretty proud right now that's uh that's pretty close Yeah, I, I like, I know a couple of like, I mean, I know the big ones, like I know like Batman is DC and like (laughs) Spider-Man is Marvel and then everything else. I'm still like slowly learning how everything goes together. But yeah, well, it's so hard too, right? Because like every publisher has like a bajillion teams and stuff like that. Well, and that's the thing too, like sometimes, so like sometimes someone I know who's working on something like I'll know that that comic is with a certain company and then they'll work on another thing somewhere else. And so I'm like, okay, hold on. <laughs> Which Yeah. Yeah. yeah you have to like, <laughs> yeah, it's like, is Captain Marvel with DC? Right. No. Well, yeah. Cause I'm like, okay, <laughs> I, she's all over the place, which is amazing. But <laughs> I have to like keep track of what's happening. Yeah, um, when when uh, Sweeney Boo was announced for that, I like lost my shit because yeah. I love her so much. She's a friend, and she's like so good. She's so awesome. good, and I love Sam Max. I was like, oh my god, I know again another dream team. It's so <laughs> cool. Um, so you said that you just wrapped. She said destroy. So this is like the time to get the full collection right yes so if if anyone likes collecting single issues the last issue comes out i think the day or two before new york comic con starts so october 2nd i believe um but if you're a trade waiter which understandable um i think it's uh the first or second week of november that the trade comes out which was also a great time to gift it for the holidays yes yes uh, is it appropriate for like younger people i would say probably sticking to like the 13 to end up range just because there's a little bit of violence and and that's uh, a hard age to shop for so i actually normally keep an eye out or an ear out for like cool comics that so i bought like lumberjanes for my nieces and now they're getting a little older so i'm like we we were wondering if it was like considered ya uh for a while because like Vault actually uh, created a YA line called Myriad, um, and that's going to be more graphic novel. But I definitely do think that depending on what type of parents there are in that scope, yeah, that it could be considered maybe like teen range and up. Cool. Maybe like I might give it to my nieces, and they are thirteen and younger. But I would definitely say like it's definitely for any type of reader period like awesome. we've had amazing feedback from a wide range of uh reviewers and different sites so we're really excited that it's reaching out to like a lot of different readers not just sci-fi and fantasy readers so that's so awesome um mm-hmm. so that is going to be available very soon and then where can people follow you to see like all the cool anthologies you've been working on and like what's coming up next, et cetera, et cetera. We actually, um, there's going to be an anthology that I just finished up recently called dead beats. And that is actually, uh, edited and some written by Joe Corallo, who is my collaborator on she said destroy and co-edited with Eric Palicki, um, who's, really big in comics and that is coming out I think near Halloween and that's by a wave blue world press uh publisher um it's essentially an anthology it's a haunted like anthology about a store clerk and like a record store a record and like oddity store that brings you in and like all of the stories wrap in together it's phenomenal I actually read it Joe sent me an early copy I literally could not believe how phenomenal this book is 
That's so um, cool. Yeah, so glad to be a part of it. Actually, Eric Paliki is the writer of my story, which I I was like check mark on one of my goals of like my career because yeah. Paliki is like a great dude, and I've always wanted to do something with him. And this was like the perfect story, and he wrote such a good one. Is that um, like a pre order thing, or is it going to be available to buy? I th- I think right now you can pre-order, pre-order through your local comic shop, but I think at New York Comic Con they might have copies oh, at sweet. the booth, which is also rad. Um, I feel like so many anthologies are like Kickstarter projects or something like that, where like if you don't know about it before it happens, you can't get then it. Then it's like so too late, yeah. yeah. So this Isn't is that so <laughs> so <laughs> <it's incredible>. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. As long as you pre-order it through your local comic shop, um, then you should be able to get your hands on a copy or like a local convention. I think like Northeast Wait Away Blue World is pretty prevalent up there. Sweet. Um, and then I'm also, I just finished uh, uh, the Guar comic. There is a new Guar comic coming out uh, written by, I think it's Matt Miner and Matt McGuire. And I did a portion of the story in that, and that is through Renegade Arts. And I think uh, that is coming out in the next couple months as well. So you and so, that will <laughs> so, so you haven't been busy or anything? No, not at all. I totally did not do two books worth in a month, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Which is why we had to reschedule this. Listen, I understand. So, That's so good. Yeah, but you can find all that at your local comic shop and request to pre-order it. Um, And all of my social media is actually just at Liana Kangas. So easy. So I mostly post on Twitter, mostly. I try to post on Instagram a little bit, but it's... um, It's a different thing. So there's one that you are into. I totally totally say stick with what you like because they are super different. Yeah, I used to Twitch stream, and I will actually be restarting that soon. Ooh, cool. Yeah, and I I got to a point where I was getting pretty good at being daily. <clears throat> However, I had to buy a new computer because my hard drive crashed. So uh, yes. once I get that back up and running again, I'll be on Twitch as well. So That's awesome. Yeah. Sweet. Uh, thank you so much for chatting. I'm so excited to see all these things come out. I'm going to be stalking you this fall. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, you are everything. getting tons of gifts. That's what's coming up at New York. So prepare yourself. <laughs> I'm ready. Yeah. And seriously, everyone, please go follow Liana. Her art is so, so great. It's the best. Aww. Jordan, oh my gosh. I know. Thank you. <laughs> so lovely. I'm, I can't believe, I can't believe all these things have happened in just a couple of years. Like, this is a very good sign <laughs> that you're getting it. Yeah. Out. It's nuts, but I love it. I would not do anything. I don't think I'd do anything else at this point. That's it's awesome. crazy, but it's so worth it. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then if you're a con goer, like, look for Liana's name either on panels or in Artist Alley. Um, yeah. She's everywhere, which is so fun. I think my next upcoming cons is like Walking New York and I will be at Memphis Comic Expo two weeks after. Oh, sweet. Yeah, cool. middle of October. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you again so, so much. Um, thank you, Joe. You're yeah. the best. <laughs> And thank you all for listening. Um, please go follow Liana. And if you like podcasts and want to leave us a rating or a review or give us a follow, we would appreciate it so much. Have a great week, everyone. Stay nerdy and we'll talk to you later. Bye.